and finally onto the bird after all these hours and actually weeks of painting but I think probably I've spent about 20 hours or so on there I've had to take a good few breaks when I've done pastels in between as well but reference photo on the left so that's a photo I found on free reference photo site and um, I've adjusted it slightly as well to suit this scene more and you can see I've just dragged some colors out in Photoshop or an image editor they all do it pretty much um, just to give me ideas of the major colors and tones that I need just to make it that bit simpler now the eagle that I'm painting is exactly the same size as the one on the left as I mentioned a few times through the videos don't forget I'm um, shooting at an angle as less of an angle as I possibly can to make it as accurate for you guys but I am shooting at an angle all the same so mine's looking a bit distorted and a bit smaller at the moment you can see where on the sky I've I've actually gone over or I'm under the um, the bird so I've not painted up to the edge I put the um, transfer paper with the dry underpainting put transfer paper down lined up uh, a sketch I'd done of the bird the initial sketch so it was actually uh, lined up to what was already there and then I've used that with the transfer paper to put the edge and a few of the details of the bird in just so that I can see the feathers etc so zoomed in now just a bit more for you so uh, you can see me putting in the basics the first strokes of the head and the beak and because the beak is going over a dark area it's going to take a few layers to build up the opacity to get it nice and nice and opaque and yellow but at the moment just getting in the first blocking in stages Now moving on to the, coming back from the beak to the head, so we've got a lighter section in here. The body, the wings, they use a, an opaque paint, so the browns, the earth colours are more opaque, the black. So I can actually get quite a lot of that done in one layer. Whereas with the yellows and the oils, uh, the oranges, although they are opaque as well it's not to the same degree so that's why I've got to build up those layers on those areas so the main thing I need to do is get in um, you know a solid underlayer I can go pretty much one flat dark color for the wings but it's surprising what you can do with just you know a middle sized brush and actually put in wet paint on top of wet paint so once I've got the basic in there, I can see areas that need to go a bit darker, other areas will need to go a bit lighter, and I can make those adjustments like I always do. Now the eye is not complicated at all, the only difficult part of it is so small, it's really really tiny. So needing to be a um, very steady hand, holding my breath almost as I'm doing it to try and keep as steady as I can. And that's, that's good enough for now. touch up here and there I'll have to come and revisit this part as well but don't don't try and do little areas like that if you you're hyped up on coffee 
you need to do it when your your hands really steady and as I mentioned I can pretty much get um, just some dark paint going for the outlines of the wings burnt umber lamp black fairly large brush you can see when I'm going over the mountain now it's really already pushing that scenery backwards in the painting this dark on the wing is going to be the darkest dark on the painting so that's going to make that come forwards and it's just a case of steady hand and uh, enough paint on the brush a little bit of thinners in there odorless thinners just to make it slip off of the brush nice and easily And with that in place I'll now start working backwards again start blocking in more of the bird so I've got my reference really now with the darkest darks that's going to be on the wing area so I can judge those browns a little more, bit more accurately I've just zoomed right back now so you can get a bit of a feel of the the bird actually in the scene I'm not putting any details on so you're not missing out on anything I'm using mainly burnt umber lamp black touch of burnt sienna every now and again to warm it up it's just white I'm adding to that just to make the the lighter tones only a very small amount and you can see how opaque as I said this paint would be so I can go in pretty much that feather direction and get a really really good coverage straight away on the first layer so just two layers really will do the majority of this the first layer that blocking in getting the general colors a little bit more accuracy on the second layer and then just a bit of touching up here and there but I'm going to let the brush do a lot more of the work rather than looking for tiny brushes I'm going to be more dabbing um, the colour on as you'll see getting the base tone in going a bit lighter and actually making the brush marks the feather marks more often than not rather than as I said going for little tiny round brushes So just a case of, of blocking in, looking for the lights and the darks as well. That's the important part, those, those tonal lights and darks.
With this uh, bottom wing, easiest way to tackle it is pretty much just go with a flat colour and block in all the shapes first and come over, adding a touch of white to it. Um, and, then, and then just put in some of those indications. It's not much of an indication of feathers on there, so I think that would be the easiest way to go with it. Fairly thick paint and uh, just block it in to start. Same process with the top wing, especially the darker outsides. Unfortunately, got a bit of light glare on this section. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Unavoidable. I've got to actually light up the paint in as well, and I'm trying not to allow the glare to come on with the oils. But um, same process, pretty much blocking in with a dark colour. Okay, quite happy with how that's coming. You can see the brushwork I just used for to indicate basic feathers on the wings, but uh, it's mainly about getting the darks in. I think I'll work on the feet now. Simple enough using the same colors really that I'm using on the beak. So um, cad orange, cad yellow deep, bit of Windsor yellow, white. That's the colors I'm mainly using. When I want a richer colour, the pinky tones in them, just put a bit of burnt sienna in there. But um, simple enough. As I said, there's no real talons or anything to do. Just uh, block the colour in first, then make those adjustments. And that's almost all the bird blocked in. I'll just have the tail to go. So that's a basic colour put in on the feet. So I've lightened it with some white and some of the um, Windsor yellow to give me a bit more of a punchy colour. And that's what I'm using now to shape, create that shape, putting the highlights on. So I've got the mid-tone already on there. This is the highlight area. And that's already starting to give it more of a, a three-dimensional appearance.
So finally, the last bit of the initial blocking in everything, all of the canvas is going to have some paint on there, at least one layer now when I finish this. The tail, so you can see I've got my colors that I dragged out just to help me on that left hand side on the reference. And I'm blocking those in, simple enough, making sure I've got my darks dark enough. Surprise now, blue the um, tail is on this bottom section anyway. So you can see I'm just blocking all this in, then I'll come back in, start lightening it up. So this part, not complicated at all, fortunately. <laughs> it's a nice break from those trees. Now you can see I've got a much lighter mix, just put in some of the suggestions of these details. I'll come back in and refine it. Lots of refinement still need to be done. But uh, just put in a few touches here and there. Okay, next layer. Now I can really start to build up the opacity on the beak, being really careful. All that first layer is dry, as you can see I'm resting the mile stick on the eagle, so that's all nicely dry. Now if the colour, when you're doing subjects like this, if especially on darks, colours can sink. At the beginning of your painting session, a little bit of liquid on the oh, um, Gamblin, uh, sorry, M. Graham, Walnut medium, that's, that's the usual one I use rather than liquid. Just a tiny touch of that on some tissue or lint free rag and just give it a wipe over the surface. Very small amount and that'll bring the richness of the blacks back. And then it's almost like working on wet paint and you can judge the colours and tones much more accurately. So, as I said, building up the layer, you can see how much more opaque it is now, it's looking a lot more solid.
So now I'm just refining the rest of it. So when you judge mine against the photo, you can see mine's that bit darker. So I'm going to start going lighter and lighter, more refinement, same colors, but just add in the details, the shape, the um, details of the lightness to the feathers at the top as well. But mainly with a fairly large brush, as you'll see. Obviously the brush I'm using now looks a bit small, but considering the details I'm putting in, it's fairly large. I haven't gone to, to like a rigger or anything like that. Still keeping it quite loose-ish looking. Surprising, you don't need to put every little tiny dot in, but obviously I need enough uh, details for it to read true to the background. So that's what I'm going to carry on doing. Now I started fiddling a bit too much with that chest area, so I decided to wipe it out. I wasn't happy with it, so you get to see my mistakes as well. Well, they're not really mistakes, it's little testing areas. I'm trying things out. That underlay was all dry, so I can, it's oils, I can just wipe it away, and that's why it's a nice, easy medium. And what I decided, best way is to get another solid layer in there, and then work the details into that instead. Okay, so starting now from more of a solid underlayer, switch into a, a, a short flat brush, so it's not a, a round, and I'm just using the brush marks to build up the layers of feathers. Not going too light just yet. Positioning where those feathers are, just roughly, don't have to follow everything exact and then I'll gradually go lighter and lighter. Switch to a small brush for once here, just to put the indications of the little feather details. As you know, I normally use a larger brush, not very often I use a very small brush. My eagle actually in real life looks a bit lighter, more representing the reference. I think it's just because the light's got so close to our left hand side, making it look a little bit brighter than it is.
building up a bit more detail now on this chest area it's more of a showy area so add in some more white to the mixers just to lighten them and a lot of this is being painted wet on wet as you can say see because the under layer is still completely wet and when you don't want too hard an edge or anything too vibrant wet and wet can be really good especially for wild, wildlife art because lots of nature um, elements like fur and feathers have a softness to them and it's it can be sometimes difficult to get that softness when you're using acrylics which tack up and start drying very fast so that's personally why I like oils the thing I don't like about traditional oils they take so long to dry different colors dry at different rates so that's the main and only reason then that I use alkyd oils rather than traditional oils because they all dry at the same rate and they all dry by the next morning but I've still got that benefit of being able to um, paint wet and wet when I want to and blend more easily so just going to carry on now adding some more refinement and detail Now as I'm working my way onto the wing you can you'll see how I'm using a smallish brush um, lighter paint and I'm making that brush make the marks or do the work for me it's actually making the marks of the feathers as I said I'm not going hyper realistic as long as I've got the impression of the feathers sometimes that looks more real than if I kind of detail every little edge of the feathers it can be a little harsh looking and unrealistic so sometimes a looser way of working which is faster as well which is always good <laughs> not I'm trying to rush it but I like to see things develop quite quickly I'm not the most patient of um, artists although obviously I had a bit of patience on the on the trees it did stretch my limits and now I'm enjoying bit more looser work on the eagle
So with the wing feathers, the long feathers, I'm doing those fairly loose as well with uh, you know not not a very small brush using more uh, sweeping motions just to get the indication of the shape the direction of those longer feathers
All I've really got left to do is the tail. As I said, my eagle is actually a bit brighter than it's than it's appearing, so um, it's more in fitting anyway. It's probably in between what you're seeing on the screen and the reference. It's not quite as bright as the reference. And I'll show you an image right at the end with um, proper studio lighting and done with my uh, digital SLR to show you the final piece. You can see just a bit of refinement now on the tail, getting the shape more accurate, darks, lights, and then a couple of the lighter um, feathers as well, just to make it pop a bit more. Working my, my way up now, still refining those edges. A little bit of blending, wet into wet. And what I'll do, I'll come back to the painting. I'll leave it for a week or two now. There may be some slight touching up here and there that I'll do, but uh, very little, probably nothing that you'd notice. But sometimes it's nice to come back with fresh eyes. And uh, sometimes I spot something that I'd like to adjust just to punch it up usually a bit more.
Okay, final few strokes. Hope you've enjoyed this video series. It was a lot more uh, work. Those trees, the mountains I really love doing. I like doing the trees as well, but perhaps not a thousand of them. And uh, really enjoyed doing the bird as well. So just going to put final few details in and then at the end I'll show you that um, finished painting that I promised and the studio lighting so it'll all look a bit more punchy and uh, more accurate then. Now if I'd done this in pastels a lot of it would have been the same but I've never tackled anything like this with pastels so it may have been a bit different doing that misty mountain but uh, that may be something I'll tackle in the future perhaps with a few less trees so I hope you've enjoyed the video hope you've picked up some tips something uh, very different I don't think there's any other uh, videos out there that go into a landscape and um, eagle such as this in this amount of detail so I really hope you've enjoyed it and found it of use see you all again on the next video Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well, and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too, so there really is something for everybody and you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong, hope to see you there soon.